the people that you're talking to are already living in a kind of post-apocalyptic world. Hold on there. Yeah. <laughs> Hold your horses. <laughs> Today we shall discuss the YouTube video Trump Right, OK, the world's gone nuts, uh, which is Russell Brand on Donald Trump's victory. Yeah. It was recorded right after, I believe. It's an episode of his YouTube series, The Trues. Trues is like the news if the news were, we're true. Nose <laughs> is a tool that is abused to fool you and to leave you scared and confused. Trues is like the news if the news was true. I want some trues. Let's have some trues. The title song of the series already contains a complete mistrust. Mm hmm. In anything that calls um, itself news. Yeah. Anything um, different than this show. Yes, this yes. is the only true source. This is all you need to watch. Yeah. Um, well, you should watch, even. Yes. All right, let's play it then. Let's. Hello, Russell Brand. This is the truth. Donald Trump's president of America now. I wanted to talk to you while everyone's sort of still delirious and in shock about it. We've talked about Donald Trump quite a lot on the truce because he's like a fascinating media operator he said such outlandish and offensive things but is a um, antithetical to our times where politicians seem so groomed and slick even though in some ways he is both groomed and slick because he has a sort of a earnestness and a rawness he said he's antithetical to modern politics yes. which is well i wouldn't say it's nonsense but it is kind of nonsense isn't it he's uh the product he's a populist he's what's been happening all over europe even all over the world for the last five years has been leading mm -hmm. up to people making bold statements that are yes. not necessarily uh grounded in reality uh becoming popular uh ignoring facts mm -hmm. um being of the people even though uh they are demonstrably of the elite, mm -hmm. uh, still being embraced by what is called the people anyway. Mm -hmm. So this first statement of being antithetical seems mm. odd. I think that traditional politics in the mind of Russell Brand is still, well, I guess, Tony Blair. Yeah, stuffy old. David Cameron. Uh, Donald Trump is antithetical to the kind of traditional politics that... Russell Brand hates, yeah. as he argues in his interview with uh, Jeremy Paxman. Yeah. Oh, I, this is what I noticed when I was in the Houses of Parliament. It's decorated exactly the same as Eton. It's decorated exactly the same as Oxford. So a certain type of people goes in there and thinks, oh, this makes me nervous. And another type of people go in there and go, this is how it should be. And I think that's got to change now. So um, being antithetical to what you hate might just be a good M thing, might right? Might be a good thing, yeah. This, for me, Donald Trump's victory and the decision of Britain to leave Europe point to a, a phenomenon that I think is really well outlined in an article by a man called Thomas Frank in The Guardian, where he points to the idea that liberalism as a political system has failing so many people that they have lost interest and lost faith. And my own personal feeling about it is that people no longer trust the people that say, hey, we'll look after you, it's okay, stay in Europe, it'll be all right, vote for Hillary Clinton, it's going to be better, because the people that you're talking to are already living in a kind of post-apocalyptic world, for want of a better phrase. You can't tell people that it'll be terrible if we leave Europe, if the world they live in is already terrible. You can't tell people it'll be terrible to have Donald Trump in power if the world they live in is already terrible. They're not susceptible to that kind of threat. Hold on there. Yeah. <laughs> Hold your horses. <laughs> a post-apocalyptic world. Yes. Is that even remotely true, factually? He says my own personal feeling, so I guess that's enough of a disclaimer. Uh, yeah, but that's the easy way out that Brand prefers. Yes. Uh, he'll make very bold statements, very serious statements, and then um, undermine himself or or protect himself by saying, it's just my opinion, and I'm just a comedian, or I'm yes, just this or yes. just that. There's going to be a revolution. It's totally going to happen. I think not, not only I, I ain't got a flicker of doubt. This is the end. I'm here just to draw attention to a few ideas. I just want to have a little bit of a laugh. Uh, let's, uh, for the sake of having a serious uh, <clears throat> argument or discussion, uh, take him seriously. How terrible is the world right now? Yeah. I would like to point to a video I have already pointed to once in this show. The video by Hans Rosling titled 
200 countries, 200 years, 4 minutes. And in that video, he shows that the life expectancy and the wealth per capita mm -hmm. worldwide have increased yeah. in the last two centuries. This development really doesn't look apocalyptic or post-apocalyptic to me. The point mm. is that there was progress, uh, demonstrably, mm. but uh, not enough that everyone believed mm. there was progress. There was enough um, uh, poverty, there mm. was enough trouble uh, that people could be told, look, everything is post-apocalyptic. Mm. There is a self-fulfilling prophecy aspect to this way of thinking. You make things worse by all the time saying things are post-apocalyptic. The reason Russell Brand gives for Donald Trump's victory sounds very much like the reason he gave to Jeremy Paxman for not voting anymore and for encouraging others not to vote anymore. Yeah. It's not uh, that I'm not voting out of apathy. I'm not voting out of absolute indifference and weariness and exhaustion from the lies, treachery, deceit of the political class that has been going on for generations now and which has now reached fever pitch where we have a disenfranchised, disillusioned, despondent underclass that are not being represented by that political system. So voting for it is tacit complicity with that system and that's not something I'm offering up. All these people have become disillusioned yes. with the system. Yes. Oh, how could they have become so disillusioned? Yeah. Maybe it has something to do with a lot of people saying they should be disillusioned, among which, uh, obviously, Russell Brand. Aren't you bored? Aren't you more bored than anyone? And you've been talking to them year after year, listening to their lies, their nonsense. Then it's this one gets in, then it's that one getting in. But the problem continues. Why are we going to continue to contribute to this facade? This, by the way, is something... Nigel Farage would say. Russell Brand has, I think, some trouble yeah. uh, distancing himself really from Donald Trump yeah. and, and Nigel Farage and, and, and the likes of them. Yeah, I, th I think to a, 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 an extent um, these movements are his fault. Yes. Uh, the Brexit movement uh, and, and now Trump mm. um, are his fault or that, that way of thinking. Mm -hmm. um, it says literally uh, the system doesn't work so we are not taking part to, in it to hell with to system. hell with it don't vote please don't vote are you sure you don't want to vote no seriously don't yeah. vote uh, he's been pushed on that time and time again no don't vote but if they were to take you seriously and not to vote yeah they shouldn't vote oh, they should that's one thing they should do don't bother voting these are my ideals and everyone who has these same ideals let's all band up and not vote yes <laughs> yes <laughs> Sorry, man, what the <laughs> hell are you talking about? Um, and then <laughs> complain that the system doesn't vote, uh, doesn't work, because uh, uh, people um, that have the same sentiments as you don't usually vote, so don't get uh, their ideas represented in parliament or in government in uh, any way, mm. um, and see that uh, sort of as uh, proof for the fact that you shouldn't vote. Yes. No. Um, Sure, the, the system might be flawed, but if you would just vote, then gradually the system could move. Right. Uh, the, the whole philosophy seems very much like that of a spoiled child. Like, is it perfect? Is it absolutely perfect? Is it exactly what I ordered? Is it exactly what I want? Which he can't even define. I look elsewhere for alternatives that might be of service to humanity. Alternate means, alternate political systems. Uh, they being... Well, I've not invented it yet, Jeremy. I had to do a magazine last week. I've had a lot on my plate. Is it exactly what I feel like I sort of should mm. want? Sort of like this? Well, no, mm. not yet. Well, then, screw it. It's common knowledge, by the way, in the United States that a low turn-up yeah. during election day um, will favor the Republican candidate. Yeah, and now there is Donald Trump. Oh, even more reason to be more... Dis let's... Yeah. Vote yes. even less. And like, of course I'm aware of like the mad things he said about women and the mad things he said about Muslims and the mad things he said about building walls. And what I think is fascinating that someone can say that and it makes no difference. People still vote for him. How disenchanted, how disillusioned, how disempowered can you be that this seems like a sensible alternative? My interpretation is the only thing they actually cared about is change. That Hillary Clinton, it, whatever she was offering and whatever she was saying is a, a, a political affiliate of Barack Obama who's already in power. They just wanted change. Yeah. 
and Hillary Clinton wasn't change. Yeah. So it had to be Trump. I just see Russell Brand's mindset at work here. Yeah. I think he's. it's a very fair point that he's making. I agree. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I agree uh, with you that yeah. that is the logical conclusion to his philosophy, or at least the way he uh, translates his philosophy yeah. into practice, which is yeah. don't vote, don't do anything. He reminds me of the Bernie or bust yeah. slogan. Yeah. When Bernie Sanders wasn't made the Democratic candidate, mm -hmm. part of his supporters said Bernie or bust. Yeah and said we are not going to vote now yeah. let trump have the presidency yeah instead of voting for the most left alternative they sort of mm. went hardline and shot themselves in the foot on principle mm. which mm -hmm. maybe maybe even has the moral high ground i don't know but in the end has led mm. to the moral low ground anyway. There was this yogi whose name I really should learn, who said to um, Bertrand Russell, when Bertrand Russell was campaigning for nuclear disarmament, he said to him, like, hold on, what's the point in us getting rid of nuclear weapons if we still have the mindset that created the nuclear weapons? And Bertrand Russell goes, I don't talk about that. Let's just get rid of nuclear weapons. You can't blow up a planet with a mindset. As long as people get angry at each other, there should be nuclear bombs. Right. If you turn his argument around, yes. that's basically what he's saying. No, we should leave the nukes because they are a nice demonstration of people being angry. Let's all concentrate on human nature. And as long as we can't change human nature, we might as well have we nukes. We might as well have nukes. <laughs> Great. Good point. Good point, Mr. Right. Brown. Thank you. Uh, sounds like Bernie or Bust to me again. Yeah, exactly. It comes down to we agree with Bertrand Russell's retort here. You can't blow up a planet with a mindset. Yeah. You can do so with nuclear weapons. Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, the mindset is certainly important yeah. and let's all evolve and stuff, yeah. please. But let's start yeah. with not having weapons of mass destruction. Yeah. Please, let's start with that. But now, 40 years later, 50 years later, we haven't achieved nuclear disarmament. There are more weapons. I believe there are less nukes now than there are. He's talking about 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. There are less nukes now, aren't there? Right. Yeah. We haven't achieved nuclear disarmament. May as well um, have done nothing. Yes, and um, might the attitude of this great yogi have attributed to the fact that we yeah. haven't yet reached that yeah. point. Yeah, exactly. People who were pro-nuclear weapons might have said, well, look, people have this mindset, so, you know, what am, what yeah. am I going to do? As long as everyone else has this mindset, I'm going to keep my nukes. Yeah. Which I believe is the great pro-nuke argument. Uh, if pe other people are going to have it, I want yeah. to have it. Right. Uh, so that's exactly the problem with this argument. Interestingly, I think um, Donald Trump's presidency brings closer mm -hmm. to us um, some real apocalyptic possibilities. Yeah. Trump has said, let there be an arms race. Yeah. Trump is not yeah. a fan of the non-proliferation treaty. Russell Brand says we are living in a post-apocalyptic world, but we are living in a pre-apocalyptic world. Yeah, just you world. wait, my yes. friend. <laughs> and the apocalypse yeah. um, is brought nearer by Russell Brand's way of way thinking, of thinking yeah. which brought us Trump. And the point that that yogi was making is the fact that Donald Trump is president of the United States is sort of not what's important. What's important is the conditions have occurred in which Donald Trump becomes. Like, you know, so it's no point reacting to what? Donald Trump is president of America. Yesterday, the conditions existed for it to happen. So they did two days ago, a month ago, a year ago, and for the last 10, 20 years, they've been building towards this moment. What he's saying is the conditions were there for something to go wrong. So when it goes wrong, meh. Yeah. Meh. So the, uh, the conditions are uh, such, I mean, there are flammable objects all around us. There's all yeah. this uh, electrical equipment. Uh, there are a lot of conditions that could, you know, uh, lead to this house burning down. Eh, so if it burns down, you know, it was why just as bad. <laughs> yeah, why the fuss? Because the conditions were there yesterday. I mean, so why are we complaining that the house burned down? The conditions <laughs> for it burning down were here yesterday. We're here 20 years ago, which is also like, yeah, we're right. here 20 years, what are you talking about? We're here 20 yeah, years ago. Exactly. And then he sort of changes up, we're leading up to this, which is also a very easy point to make. You know, this has happened so clearly, everything has been leading up to it. Yeah. But yeah. Why are you alarmed at the fact? You should have been alarmed at the possibility. Yeah. There is something to that. Sure. Um, 
uh, but um, he's going to call it inevitable. Yeah. And that's something different. That's, that's a problem. That's not a possibility. That's fate. We've just cre- for the last 20, 30 years been creating the conditions where this was as we now know, inevitable, because it has happened. That's a great <laughs> argument for doing nothing at all. Yeah. In the end, we had to reach some kind of sort of climax, some type of sort of crisis, some kind of nadir, where it's no longer possible to continue in the way we have been. It had to happen. No. I believe that it did not. No. Let's remember that the popular vote went to Hillary. Mm. Let's remember how close it was. Right. What are you Good even point. what are you what are you talking about? It had to happen. No, it didn't, man. If no. people would have voted, it wouldn't have happened. What I think the election of Donald Trump means is it's no longer possible to pretend that politics is, is all right. Because look at it. Now look at it. Now you see. I have been sabotaging the system for years now. It is finally crippled. Let's forget that I encouraged this. Yep. And just look at how crippled it is. Yeah. And see that as proof of my point. Yeah. If Hillary Clinton had become president, she's a person that did have those affiliations with the banks, that does want to go to war in the Middle East and the Yemen, all these things. You know, stuff that I don't know very much about. But what I suspect is we would not have got real change. With Donald Trump, it's no longer possible to ignore that real change is required. I guess he just said, uh, I prefer Trump to Clinton. Yeah. Because I prefer it to come crashing down and people won't be able to ignore the problems anymore. Right. Which seems strange because in the meantime the problem problems are going to get worse. And they mm. might get more systemic. Mm. Right? They might get yeah. harder to solve. Yes. Because uh, you're corrupting the system further <laughs> uh, instead of changing it from within. So, mm. of course it's possible it's going to yeah. be more possible it's going to be made possible that's what corruption is that's what a media savvy president is going to do he's going to make it possible for people to accept this people accept the situation they are given um so it is more possible now that they accept it than it was a couple of years ago Uh, if you as russell brand does in every episode of the truth just say um, the truth is like the news if the news were true in other words the news is not true Mm. If you encourage people to uh, disbelieve anything Mm -hmm. that uh, news programs and and papers, Mm -hmm. journalists tell them, then you make it very easy for someone like Donald Trump to get away with lies and get away with ignoring things being very wrong. And you can point to lies in the media, of course, but saying that the media consists of lies across the board is, I think, very dangerous yeah. and not true. Yeah. Um, by the way, it's also hypocritical because uh, Russell Brand quotes newspapers yeah. all the time mm-hmm. to make his To point. make his points, yeah. This fits mm-hmm. his narrative that now, or if this were to continue, mm-hmm. if we were to keep voting for corrupt people, or then the only way to fix it would be violent revolution, mm-hmm. would be... Yeah. Um, away from outside of the system because he's uh, scratching off, he's removing all the options of uh, letting the system work and letting the system uh, move towards a way that it can uh, be positive. Right. Uh, I'd rather have it move negatively so that uh, the 99% versus the 1% has to clash. Right. right? That's sort of uh, what's going to be inevitable now. Yeah, uh, He seems to think. And he seems to... Uh, promote right he seems to this is the positive thing about this election look guys calm down because the positive thing about this is that a revolution and a breaking of the system are now inevitable they aren't Mm. i believe but they still aren't it reminds me also of something else he said in the jeremy paxman interview Mm -hmm. so these little valves these sort of like little cozy little valves of recycling and Prius and like, you know, turn up somewhere. It stops us reaching the pit point where we think, oh, this is enough now. Stop voting. Stop pretending. Wake up. So perhaps we need Trump. We need something really catastrophic to yeah. happen. We need that apocalypse. Yeah. So I can finally say what I was already saying, that we are living in a post-apocalyptic world, but then it will finally be true. Yeah, it will be really true. It's yeah. true now because it's the truth, but it will be really true then. Right. And, uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> right. Be so, oh, oh, it'd be so nice. There's some, there's some creepy, perverse yearning for this yeah. apocalypse to happen. He cannot be alarmed at Trump because somehow it's fulfilling to him yeah. that things are uh, coming to a climax in this yeah. way, in a bad way. Yeah, I, I sort of feel like these are ideas. Or there aren't, they aren't really ideas, but they're feelings that I might have had when I was 16 or something that I really yeah. feel like I could agree with then. Yeah, fuck everything. Blow it up. Um, but it's really lazy. Mm. It is sort of the opposite of everything that it uh, purports mm. to be, <laughs> that it mm -hmm. wants to be, which is, okay, the environment's bad. So you can get a hybrid car if you're rich. Right? Right. Or you can do the recycling. All these things that mm. he quotes. Turn down the bloody heat. And yeah. put on a sweater, Russell. I mean, I don't yeah, know if yeah, you've yeah. watched the truth, but he's always half naked. And it's like, mm. um, turn down the heat, turn on a sweater. But what about turning up the heat and wearing a sweater? And that's wearing, what I do. Yeah, sort of like, anyway, evening it up. Making an effort toward uh, preservation of the world around you. Yeah. Making an effort toward... Right. But that's just little valves. Yeah, it's all, you Simon. know, no, that's an illusion. Anything that I can do... Like, personally, that takes effort is an illusion and doesn't really matter. So the whole system should blow up, and it will blow up naturally, so I don't have to do anything again. And then everything will be great, naturally, without me having to do anything. That seems yeah. to be... His philosophy. His, ph his philosophy. The, right. the jump between these theories and the practical mm. is nothing, is do nothing. No, man, it takes work, yeah. <laughs> dude. Uh, do something, please. Uh, put on a sweater. There is one thing that I will, I still have to point out, that the font there yeah. is so... Doesn't that remind you of sort of Gothic German? Right, and it reminds me truths, of Nazi propaganda. Yeah, it really does. I have to say that B really <laughs> makes up for it. <laughs> it really does. The upper font is his intention, the lower font exactly. is the consequence. Yeah. Let's call it quits. Let's. Thank you. Thank you for coming. This Thank is you. Simon Veda. I forgot to introduce oh, you. Oh, right, yeah. My guest is Simon Veda, oh, yeah. writer, <laughs> author. Author.